Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. And we do apologize for the technical glitch at the top of our newscast. But leading the news at this time, protest action today. Some parents and students of the Milton Lynch Primary School are fed up with the conditions there. This morning, they vented their concerns while protesting with placards outside the Water Street Christchurch compound. Interim PTA Vice President Minden Yearwood explained the issues included cowich, bird droppings, a rat infestation, and stray dogs. While admitting that the ministry has been making attempts to rectify the problems. She says parents are not convinced that the officials are moving fast enough. Last November, they shut the school symbol for two days. And what they did was they started the prop, started to mend it, but they haven't been completed. There's still the pigeons, there's still the dropping. This weekend gone, they come, they clean a part off what's supposed to be taken care of. But no covered all no smell like feces. This is not comfortable for our children. And Education Minister Santia Bradshaw has commented on the protest action. She explains that several issues were inherited from the last administration, but her team has been working to fix the problems despite the limited resources. And those efforts include collaborating with the Ministry of the Environment to have around schools cleaned. And she adds that there is room for others to come on board. Ma'am, this is a serious, serious problem that is facing the ministry. And no, I believe no amount of resources um, that we have right now will, will be able to address them in this financial year. Um, but I do feel that I have to let the country know that this is a call as well at this juncture for private sector engagement and involvement. It is a call to parents to get involved in the institutions in which your, your children are in. Well, Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Investment, Marsha Cattle, Islam, based in the last administration, for losing a significant amount of money earmarked for badly needed work at schools across the island. Minister Cattle says the loan for the Education Sector Enhancement Program was signed in 2012 and was supposed to deliver major infrastructural work. The loan was for U.S. $35 million. And... As of December 29, 2017, because of significant delays to the major infrastructure components of the program, because there were delays in completing designs and, and all kinds of other reasons, $31.4 million of that loan was cancelled. Uh, that was in December, 20, um, December 2017. Now, Fortunately, we have re-engaged the bank on this matter and they remain amenable to re-entering discussions to deliver some of this very important work. Well, principals and deputy principals within the island schools should be placed on contract. This was the suggestion from Chief Education Officer Karen Best after an animated debate with Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley on how to deal with poor leadership within schools. The system that we have that would take care of... Don't us. mind the system. I want to hear what you would like to see to change it. But, but I'm getting there. I am getting there. The system that we have is one that we, have, we don't have any principals or teachers or anybody for that matter on contracts. You are there. So you are appointed. You are on contract. You are appointed, and therefore, the so only way you can get persons out of our system. So the first thing is that you believe they should be appointed on contract. I feel we should move to a system where we have persons being placed on contract. Well, do not be envious of others because of their possessions. That is the advice Barbados' newest centenarian Dorothy Cumberbatch has offered to her fellow Barbadians. Our Rian Phillips has more. Meet Dorothy Cumberbatch. She's the latest Barbadian to reach 100 years. She celebrated her birthday with Governor General Dave Sandra Mason, friends and relatives. The mother of three, grandmother of five and great-grandmother of 13 wants more young people to be honest and humble. Don't envy no one. We used to say grudge in those days. Don't say envy for what they have because you don't know how the parents come by it. 
So you be satisfied with what I could provide for you. The former semi-supervisor at the U.S. Department Store 5 and 10 still remains active and loves reading. I love reading any paper that I pick up and have reading on it. I read it. Rianne Phillips, CBC News. And we say hello now to our Lisa Boom in our social media corner to tell us what is trending. Good evening, Lisa. Hi, good evening, Lisa. Thank you very much and welcome to What's Trending. Well, we start on a sad note tonight. Fans of the 1990s hit TV series 90210 woke up to the news yesterday that Luke Perry had died from a massive stroke. The 52-year-old actor played Dylan on the series, which had a long run on Channel 8 back in the day. Well, recently, Perry returned to the small screen on another hit show, Riverdale, which shows on our MCTV's channel 505, that's PIX11. Well, now, strokes and other non-communicable diseases are major killers here in Barbados, and this has prompted Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley to issue a directive for a special project to reduce deaths from NCDs. But she's also called for better delivery of emergency services. So our Facebook followers have been weighing in on this. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Starting with Violet B. Lenman, well, she recalled the experience she had while trying to get medical attention. And while she was having some serious symptoms, she says she has had to wait about another eight months before she can access the care she needs. Violet believes these lengthy waits are the cause of some of the heart attack deaths. Jalen C.M. Coxie agrees, saying this is a point she's discussed with friends before. She says for the death rate from NCDs to be reduced, diagnosis and treatment in a timely fashion is key. And meanwhile, Richard Blair believes Barbados should get the St. Joseph Hospital back up and running. And aerobic activity is one way to battle NCDs. Of course, Lisa and I recommend dancing. <laughs> Well, that performance was at the Dighton Griffiths Secondary School and featured past and present students, parents, as well as teachers, and even the principal. You saw him there in that last shot. Well, now the Lenten season gets underway tomorrow and continu continues until April 18th. Traditionally, during this time, people give up something. Well, this Instagram post from Jamaica Constabulary Force is urging people to do just that. And I'm sure you'll agree that's an interesting way to encourage citizens to be socially responsible. And now I'm sure you've heard the expression operating on Bajan time, right? Well, sometimes we can't help being late, but other times that can get us into trouble. Take this couple, for instance. They were on a Royal Caribbean cruise in the Bahamas, and they learned the hard way that being on time is very important. Take a look. The tourists were enjoying a day-long excursion in the Bahamas. They were supposed to return to the ship by 3.30 p.m., the last call for all passengers. But they showed up at the dock 45 minutes late, and the hatch was already closed. That sucks. It was the last day of a seven-night cruise aboard Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas. Well, the, the two were later revealed to be newlyweds, and they were on their honeymoon. Maybe that's why they were so late. Well, anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight for Watch Trending. So you can send your comments to our WhatsApp numbers, 233-7388 or 233-7555. There's also our Facebook and Instagram pages. And you can also email your pics to nca at cbc.bb and title it Pick of the Day, and that will give you a chance to be featured right here on our social media segment. But very important, remember to keep your comments clean. So we'll see you tomorrow for another look at Watch Trending. And Lisa, it is Lent starting tomorrow. I'm not giving up anything. What about you? Uh, bread and pasta. Mm. And another bad habit that I won't reveal at this time, <laughs> but you know yeah, what it is. We'll keep that under wraps for Thank now. Thank you so much. <laughs> 
A young man is dead after a two-vehicle accident involving a car and a wrecker truck early this morning. That accident took place about 10 minutes past one at the intersection of Tweeside Road, Government Hill and Welch's Road in St. Michael. Police say the front seat passenger of the car, 19-year-old Delano Seal of Eagle Hall, St. Michael, died at the scene, while the driver, 20-year-old Romario Roach of Greenwich's St. Lucie, was transported to hospital. Roach complained of pain to his feet, chest, head, and about his upper body. Two fire tenders responded with eight fire officers who had to use the jaws of life to remove the body of the deceased from the vehicle. The wrecker sustained moderate frontal damage while the motor car was extensively damaged. The driver of the wrecker, 59-year-old Tennyson Maynard, had no immediate injuries. And investigations are continuing. Well, scores of Barbadians turned out to join the Prayer Warriors International team for their annual Caribbean Day of Prayer under the theme March 4th on Your Knees. The Warriors made several prayer stops at government offices and statutory corporations, including here at the CBC. Pastor Courtney Salmon stressed prayer is powerful and notes it continues to combat many of the evil forces and crime on the island. We have crime in Barbados. It's going to affect all golden goose. And I'm, I'm speaking metaphorically now. All golden goose is the, the tourism. And tourism would affect everybody in Barbados, from the biggest to the smallest, from the church, even getting tithe and offerings. And so we have to really look very seriously at that. CBC understands there's been a serious accident involving a motorcyclist and a ZR in Spikestown, St. Peter. Initial reports suggest that the motorcyclist has serious injuries. His bike caught fire after the collision. We're also hearing that one person remains trapped in the ZR and firemen and police.